This is the original eSport racing game. This is iRacing. From Autodrome International Limanza, it's time for the Global Sim Racing Channel's final round coverage of the Advanced Mazda Cup 2019 Spring Season Championship. This is the second full season that GSRC has had the privilege of covering this fine series. In our first effort, the viewers got to see Robert Hartley win the championship. Now, as our second full season wraps up today, a new champion has been crowned, that being MX-5 Specialist Sonny Catch Me If You Catch Him. At stake today, only bragging rights and momentum. And you can be able to witness all the simulated Mazda action from Green Flag to Victory Donuts live as it happens right here on the iRacing Esports Network. Hello and welcome to another GSRC broadcast. I up in the press box to bring you our words eye view. Joe Peak returns to join me, yours truly, Bill Soup's on. John Crackers Ambrose has director duties armed with cameras located, aimed, zoomed, and focused by Dougie Beard. Joe, the schedule makers wrap up the season in Italy. Tell us a little bit about Monza. I suspect Sonny is happy he wrapped things up before here. Even with all the modern chicanes thrown into its three and a half miles, it's still a lightning fast track where drafting plays a huge part in how the MX-5s race here. That means as long as you stay with the leaders, it's going to be something of a crapshoot as to who can take the victory. But unlike places like Spa, where we've seen this type of racing before, the sharp, slow chicanes scattered among the 11 corners make for a dangerous game if you're following closely or battling side by side. It's not uncommon to see arguments with an Italian fervor because two drivers collided. The good news is these hallowed halls in the Temple of Speed aren't nearly as deadly here in the sim racing world, where at worst, you're just going to limp home with a bruised ego. Ultimately, the best way to see why this is a popular circuit in the middle of the Royal Park is uh, uh, why it's so popular is to hop on board and take a lap around the GSRC lap guide. All right, we've got Amjad Yaman in the GSRC MX-5, so let's do a lap around Monza. Coming down the front stretch, this is the longest straight into the heaviest braking zone. The Retafilo Chicane is obviously a great place to try a pass, but it certainly offers some dangers. First of all, the track narrows on the approach, and as you can see, it's extremely tight at the corner itself. So getting in side by side usually doesn't end well. Plus, those big sausage curbs can really upset the car if you hit them too hard, so make those overtakes with a bit of caution. After that, you've got the long, gentle bend to the right that is Curva Grando. This is flat out all the way until Della Rogia, so once again, the draft is going to come into play. Don't be too surprised to see drivers drift to the outside of this turn to take away the inside line into the chicane. There's a lot of paved runoff to help save you when you overshoot your braking, but the sleeping policeman and the slowdown penalty should really make you wary of cutting the course even if by mistake. On exit, watch out for the gravel trap. Expect a lot of gunk to get dragged onto the track from there. Now we hit the first Lesmo. There's a lot of banking, but try not to come into the corner too shallow. As you come off the corner, hold left to set up for the second Lesmo. This one is a lot sharper than the first, and you can be much more aggressive on the inside curb. It's pretty important to keep your momentum up, especially in this underpowered Miata. This isn't the longest stretch of the circuit, but it's very easy to botch your exit and leave yourself vulnerable down into the Ascari chicane. It's bad enough that you gotta worry about the slipstream, but you definitely don't want to give your opponent a free pass. Now this chicane is pretty different from the first two. It's faster and it has three distinct apexes. You'll try to hold tight on the first one to give a nice wide arc into the second. Once again, stay right up to the edge of the course and then swing it through the last one. That last left-hand apex should be flat out if you nailed it just right. From there, drift back across to the left side of the track and take a moment to breathe. Coming up is the Parabolica. You'd think a 180 degree hairpin would make a great place to pass, but really, if you're smart, you should set up your run off the turn. 
This is a deceptively fast corner, so it's already more difficult to outbreak someone. And then, the draft is so powerful, all they have to do is stay behind you and take the position right back on the pitch straight. That's where being patient can pay off if you simply wait and slingshot by before Retifilo. But hopefully you haven't gotten tangled up with another car amidst all the chicanes, so take some time to wave to the Tifosi and finish your lap around Monza. The lap around Monza next to the beautiful Alps, and while the mountains are pretty, so is the ocean. And it's not too far from Milan to get there. Well, attention all iRacers, we have found a way to get you all on the same boat. Take a cruise with us to celebrate the new year. That's right, sail out of Miami with us on Ju uh, January 5th, 2020 for a seven-night Eastern Caribbean cruise on the Royal Caribbean Oasis of the Seas. Special group pricing has been put in place for iRacing members and their friends. Sail away and get together with members of the iRacing community and get ready to see Phillipsburg, St. Martin, San Juan, Puerto Rico, and Labadee, Haiti. For as little as $125 a day, you can cruise the high seas for seven days. And for a small deposit, you can secure your spot today. Payment plans available for everyone. Contact Brenna today at the cruise shop to get in on this special offer. Email or call, but do it now because spots are filling up quickly. That is at Brenna at the cruise shop FW.com. Going over to their Facebook events page with all the details about this amazing offer. That is Facebook, uh, Facebook slash cruise shop FW and we'll see you on the ship. Bill? Is that cruise hard, cruise safe, and we'll see you on the ship? That's what we need to put on there. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and look at the point standings now. Keep in mind that these points take into account the four drop races around four are in the rules. Put it simply, it's a driver's best seven of 11 results. Sonny, catch me if you can in there. Has a 151-point lead over Giannis Mumelidis. But the important number is the 101 next to the droplet on Canchin's row. That is the Aussie's biggest drop score. So no matter what happens, Canchin will earn at least 101 points. The Greek streak would need to score 152 to catch Sonny. And unless uh, Sterling Moss, A.J. Foyt, and Richard Petty all register for this event, the strength field won't be big enough to get that margin closed up. There is uh, some fun battle, though, going on for fifth position as uh, Marcelo Eusebio and the Sheriff, Jordy Fife, are just a handful of points apart. We'll have to see how that plays out. Neither one of them has any drop races, any drop insurance to go. You know, the best of the best in the iRacing World Championship, as well as many top private leagues like the one you're watching right now, are showcased right here on the iRacing Esports Network. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you subscribe. GSRC is really proud to be part of the IESN stable of broadcasters. And you know, ISN is always picking up new viewers, so with those in mind, here's Joe to tell us about the race details. Absolutely. We were talking about the points, and well, some drivers might still be fighting a little bit for those, so they do have four drop weeks. You can see that uh, off there to the side with this being the final round. Uh, the setups is open since this is a C-Class. This isn't like the rookie MX-5s where they just toss you in and expect you to go. You can tweak it to find a little bit of speed. They have an incident cap, though, and that'll be important at a track like this. Chicanes usually mean incident points get racked up quick. You can only get 17 of them here before you are disqualified. And, of course, as we mentioned, they are using the official iRacing points. And there are no spare cars once you reach this uh, level in the C-Class. Uh, so if you get any damage, well, Bill, this is not a place you want to get damaged. This is not a fast car in the first place, so it's not going to have a lot of uh, grunt to, to overcome any sort of uh, messed up bodywork. I gotcha. You know, talk about going fast. That always depends on the weather. Let's take a quick peek at that, see how that's going to affect our racing today, and then we'll get down to the business on the track. What do you think, Chuck? I think this is really good conditions. It's definitely helped by the fact that it's pretty late in the evening. It's about 7.30 virtual standard time. Uh, so you can see that's really cooled it down since there's a lot of trees around the circuit. There's not too many places where you're getting direct sun blazing onto the tarmac. And you can see there's very little wind as well, so it shouldn't mess up the cars too bad. Uh, in other words, here in Italy, we've got a beautiful day for racing. Now, we did get a good attendance and the field did split. So I know that's always a bit of a dichotomy here, but we have about, what about 17 cars here today? 
A little bit more than it looks like 18. A few of the big names are here. Sonny Kanchen is here, but fear not. We talked about the drop races. His championship is secure. We ride on board with Ivan Garcia. Chance for him to score some points. Second fastest in practice, actually, in qualifying. Yeah, and everybody's really... They had to hustle to get out of the pitch. You can see with only about a minute and a half left, Ivan's just about getting out of Ascari down towards Parabolica. These are really long laps. Since in Formula One cars, this goes so fast, it's, well, it's because they've got a lot of horsepower underneath them. And again, since these are, are a little bit more street-worthy cars that aren't made to go extremely fast in a straight line, it, it takes a long time to get down those long straights. So you just don't want to dilly-dally in the qualifying. We continue to look at Garcia, who is our second fastest so far. Marcelo Isibio uh, sitting at the top. Ooh, Garcia, Garcia just coming across the line. Look at this. Ger yeah, Berger went faster than him. So Berger is now onto the front row. The good news, though, qualifying just isn't as important here, Bill. Like I said, as long as you stay with the front group, I'd say qualify within the top five, stay out of trouble in the opening lap, and you're golden. We're looking at Morris. There's a new driver. He's not on the track right now, Dino Filippa. It in six. Interesting to watch what he can do. Here's Morris. Sitting and down in the back third of the of the uh, of the field. There's the Greek streak. The good news is every driver is going to get a lap time in here in qualifying. Violet, uh, Eric Violet was the last one to get one in. He messed up his first lap. He must have had an off track somewhere. Uh, and that actually bumped him up to seventh. So that was a good jump. It looks like qualifying is up now. I think it just wrapped up. So with that done, let's go ahead and give you the starting grid. Marcelo Eusebio sits on the pole. Instead of Jonas Mumelidis, the Greek streak, row two is populated by Nicholas Berger and Ivan Garcia. Rui Combra is in fifth spot. The new driver, Dino Filippa, in sixth. Seventh and eighth, that's Eric Violet and Jordi Fike, the sheriff, looking to see if he can crack the top five before the season is over. Row five is populated by Keith Lloyd and Mitchell Peake. Your Nori Kobayashi starts at 11th, Kenny Brady in 12th, followed by Matt Moore starting 13th, and Taylor Nadebaum, Nadebaum uh, starting 14th position. Raul Gonzalez starts 15th, Lee Martin 16th, Derek Collins squeaks in in 17th, and Mark Acklin 18th. There you have it. The man who's won most of the race of Sonny Kanchen not here today, but his championship is secure. Marcelo Eusebio does have a win, would like to pick up another one. Ionos Mumbalita is still trying to get his. In fact, uh, Eusebio, the only driver with a win so far this season. And boy, the wins have been spread out through lots of drivers, including one for Little Dove. Sarah Bub earlier this. Sarah Dove got one. That was fun to call. You can see him lined up, ready to go. Our final round here of the Advanced Mazda Cup as we wait for Mumalitas to take his spot, I believe. Yeah, he's taking his time, and he is in the server, so he hasn't had a connection issue. They wait, they wait. Hopefully the Greek streak will be able to get out there. Everybody else is there. Now he gets out there. Oh, that's good. Just wanted to make sure that the GSC commentators got our bonus for getting through the entire field before we do what we're about to do. The engines harmonize. Gather up the chicken steak. Cover me on the cows. For the final time this season, the horses are out of the barn. Marcelo Eusebio leads the stampede down into the first corner. And this is the danger spot coming into Redifilio. It's very tight, and with all these cars really wanting to stay up there, they don't want to get slowed up too much and miss out, but they also don't want to collect each other. And this is actually looking pretty good so far. Little bumping and banging going on. Kenny Brady might have cut the chicane. He might have to take a, a slow down penalty. But managed they get through as they head now down into the second chicane. Yeah, that clean first chicane was a good sign for everybody really hoping to get a shot to stay up with the top group. You could have as many as 10 cars fighting for this win come the end. It all depends on how they play for the rest of this thing. 
They negotiate through the second chicane. Okay, going a little bit wide was Matt Morris, but that's all right. The entire field makes it through. Now they go down into the first of the Lesmos. That's okay. Out of that one and heading down to Ascari. This is another of the longer straights, and there was a good exit by Mumulidis. In fact, I think he might want to take the lead. Yep, looks like he doesn't want to sit behind. There's no pit stop in this race, Bill, so drivers have no reason to sit and wait behind the car ahead. You want to be leading. The opportunity's there. He decides to take it, and he jumps out. Berger's holding on nicely in third. You've got a tiny little gap back to Philippa, but honestly, it's going to take big gaps. You can feel the draft as far back as a second and a half, maybe even two seconds behind. Up front, peeking on Mumulides is Eusebio, but he's not going to do it. I like that shot as they go right under the camera. Coming down, Mumulides covers. Now there's attack for second from Nicholas Berger. They go through Parabolica, and Berger's on the inside. I think he's going to get that spot. The momentum might go to Eusebio, though, on the outside. We'll see how that plays out. Watching the whole thing happen is Philippa. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah. It looks like this group's going to go as far back as Violet right now, although he's in danger of losing the top uh, group. These four, at least, very much able to challenge each other, and I think we're going to see a pass attempt on the outside from Berger. Berger got uh, Eusebio in Parabolica, and he wanted to get Mubilides down into the first chicane. That did not happen. Eusebio gets a little bit of a hello from Cumbra. Marcelo did a good job, Joe. I was really worried. I was saying, uh oh, and he just backed out of it because I really thought we were going to have a log jab going in to uh, <laughs> Redifilio there. I think we had a bit of an issue with some of the cars behind him. Not sure what happened to them. Acklin, Garcia, and Martin have all come into the pits, and it looks like they're getting repairs. George Fike questioning his, his own sobriety. He says, I. He knows he's sober, but <laughs> must have done something that he didn't like of himself. All right, here's our pole sitter, who's fallen back to fourth, but he still has plenty of time. He's got Coimbra behind him. You can catch him just a touch in his mirror there. Yeah, Coimbra currently sitting fifth kind of just hovering around. The, the only advantage that you sometimes have to waiting back there is is not trying to put yourself in a position where you're fighting too much and making sure you stay with the leader. Because right now you can see Mumalidis is getting a tiny bit of a gap. They don't want to, this is where they do want to settle in the line, maybe even actually bump draft each other because that does gain you speed. Well, I think that Philippa is listening to you, Joe P, because he gets right on the back of Berger and gives him a big tap, saying, let's go, Nicholas. There you can see the entire group of the front five in that wide shot. Love that camera angle. The majority of the draft passes are probably going to be along here at the front stretch because this is the longest straightaway on the track, and it leads into one of the slowest corners, too, that Redifilio chicane. So opportunities are rife to try and make overtakes. Boy, everybody taking a defensive line to track right. There is an attack on Mumalides for the lead. This is Berger again. He's got a car length in front, but under braking in the preferred position, the Greek streak gets it into the chicane first, gets a little bit of a love tap from Berger, but everything is okay. The checkup opens the door for Eusebio now to make a run, but he'll be on the outside. Not sure if anything's going to happen there. Uh-oh, they're going too wide. They're awfully racing in close quarters now, Joe, as they head down into the second chicane. Yeah, Berger's got to be careful if he tries that over under, especially into Red Ophelia. Some of the other chicanes, maybe you can pull it off, but it is so slow through there. And now it looks like Philippa is going to try and get it in the mix. He's gotten it a second. Through Della Rogia, the front five remain single file through that one. Beginning to gain on these guys a little bit. You can see him back in sixth position, that blue and yellow car. That is Matt Morris. And Eric Violet coming in there too. They race for six, but if these guys would behave, they got a chance to get up there. They're only a tick under a second behind Coimbra. Yeah, that is definitely close. And Matt is definitely 
uh, trying to stretch the track out to see if he can hold on to that draft. You can see him going through the gravel. Here in the sim, it doesn't hurt as much as, as in real life, where you can lose a lot of time dragging the car through the kitty litter. You can see him back there as they begin to close. The front five going through Ascari. That left, right, left chicane. Eusebio that, with a good run. And I think he's going to take a chance on third on Berger. Yeah, he's looking around the outside. But the thing is, coming up to Parabolica, this actually isn't much of a braking zone. You'll get on them a little bit. But I was taking this corner as high as fourth gear in, in the MX-5. The front five through Parabolica. And sure enough, Morris has now closed the gap down to seven tenths of a second. And I think he's close enough to be in the toe of Colmder here. Right on board with Morris now. Behind him, bring him with him, is Violet. Yeah, Violet's just riding the coattails at this point. We got a two by two yeah. situation coming up to the first chicane. You can see it on the out the windshield there. Felipa now into the lead as he gets to the inside of Mumalides. And all of that bumping and shaking and dancing has allowed Morris to get right there. We got a seven car tray now. Morris qualified in in 13th, so. Wow. Yeah, he's really done well. Yeah, I'm curious to see whether Morris and Violet will continue to charge and try to work their way up, or if they're just going to be content for most of the race to sit back there. There will be a point eventually where they've got to start making their move. Oh! Oh! A little bit of bump on Felipe. He has to save it, but he's going to miss the second part of a. Of, of a Della Rogia. I'm not sure if he's going to get a slowdown penalty or not. So far, so good. I think he managed to keep from cutting it. Instead, he went off on the gravel on the outside of the corner. So that kind of saved him. That was a really scary moment for him. Again, you're coming from these really high speeds down to these heavy, heavy braking zones. You have a lot of trouble trying not to run into the car ahead if you're pushing the limit. And that's one of the reasons that it makes it so dangerous and so random as to who gets the wins uh, at uh, races at Monza, especially in these lower powered cars. Now you asked the question about Matt Morris and Eric Violet, if they would sit back there and relax, they have not. If they both got around Re Coimbra now, Coimbra relegated back into seventh. Let's see if Eric does anything coming down here. That's uh, Morris you see in front of him. Up a little bit ahead, you can see Berger poking his nose out on Felipe, but Felipe is going to defend the inside. As soon as things settle down up front, we'll take a peek a little bit farther in the back, but honestly, I just got a hunch that something's going to happen and it's going to be exciting. Look at the defensive line for Mumalides as everybody moves over to track right. Ooh, and I think Felipe maybe had to lift a little bit there because he just misjudged. We're looking trying at to come out wide. Yeah, oh boy. Thinking better of it is Berger. He doesn't want any part of that. Now Felipe gets into the chicane first. Mumalita takes second. Berger settles for third. They are too wide behind. Here oh. comes Matt Morris. And there goes Matt Morris. He was alongside of uh, Eusebio and it didn't work out. Get a quick replay of this one. Yeah, let's take a look. Because, I mean, the move looked good initially. And, you know, I think what it comes down to is he needed to give Eusebio just a little more room. You could see he was squeezing him all the way out to the outside. So even though it looks like maybe it's Eusebio's fault because he turned him, Morris had no reason to continue to push him to the outside like that. He really sh should have maybe pulled to the left a little more. So bad news for Morris. Good news for Eusebio as he continues and he's still in the hunt, but he's got to be careful. He's about a second back to Burgers. We come back live. And that incident started to split up the front group. Look at that. You've got a gap between Eusebio and Berger up to about a second. I'm curious if Marcello will be able to uh, get up to them and uh, retain this or if he got any sort of damage on the front that's going to slow him down. Right, using qualifying as a guide, he was your pole sitter, you think he would, but how much damage did he pick up? There was some, some pretty significant contact between him and Morris. Okay, if the drivers up front will behave, we're going to take this up as we ride on board, you see him weep. 
We'll take this opportunity to go back and check in on some of the guys a little farther back. Let's go to seventh, Joe. Kenny Brady, Mitchell Peake, and Keith Lloyd. Pe Peake and Lloyd really closest to those three. Certainly is. Morris has recovered, and he's now amongst that group. A little bit of a shove there. Peak uh, managing to get a little speed thanks to the help of Lloyd. Looks like they're all going to come out safely through the parabolic. Whoa, I spoke too soon. Way at the back. Uh, Kobayashi almost got it into the gravel off the corner. These guys might want to let Morris go through and let him do what he did earlier. He's got a ways to go, but he might have time. Let's go up front. It's too wide down into Redafilio. This time it's Filippo who's going to get there first. Mutalitas, boy, Berger is right on the back of Mutalitas. Man, on him tighter than a scuba suit on a fat man is Nicholas Berger on Jonas Mutalitas. Playing with small margins, and when you do that, the tiniest unexpected move, the tiniest error on your part uh, can cause exactly what we saw with Morris, and you could find yourself out of contention for the win. You got to be careful about how much risk you take. Coimbra has got back around fifth position and Violet. All right, we've had an issue from, uh, looks like Lloyd might have had a trouble. Let's we'll see if we can find this one. I wonder if he cut the chicane. Yep, that's exactly what happened. He uh, basically outbraked himself into Redifilio. Just decided to go straight through the grass, and well, then he paid the price. The good news is, he came back with the tail of the group, so he didn't lose the draft. Yeah, it was a ways back. He made a really brave pass as he ran around two cars to get the pass made, but he just had, I guess it's easy to pass when you don't have to worry about breaking for the chicane. I was going to say, I don't know if it counts as brave if you just <laughs> yeah. disregard the corner. Up front. Six car train. With Mumalitis Again, at the look front. at Mumalitis taking the defensive line into Parabolica. Felipe. He's going to try this, I think. Question is, can he? He's not going to be able to get down to the apex. He's leaving space. This is going to slow the group up a little bit. That's really no concern, though. They've got nine seconds back to the next one, which, interestingly, Matt Morris has already gotten to the front of. back to that battle there's Morris all by himself you can see the you can see those guys up front look at this pinata full of bees heading towards Redofilio oh my god they managed Joe oh, they still gotta come off the corner <laughs> wow and and Violet's not giving up on this one he was trying to see if he could stick it three wide off the exit of Redofilio didn't quite work out if CBO Coimbra are in front of him, fourth and fifth. Yeah, Eusebio did a good job. He had Coimbra to the outside of him coming out of Relophilia. Was real familiar to what just happened to Morris. Here comes an attack from Violet. Got him. Beautifully done. He just waited for the right moment. Oh, but he came way too hot into the chicane. And De is going to give it right back to Coimbra. The front three trying to pull away. Now we'll go back to this other battle a little farther back. Morris out in front. He's got 10 seconds to get up to the front, guys. That's a tall order. Yeah, I think it's unlikely unless we see just a huge melee happen up front that slows all cars down. I don't think uh, I don't think Morris just has enough pace in him. The good news is it looks like it's splitting up. Lloyd falling back has meant that it's now a four-car fight for that seventh position, which is a lot easier to manage. Nada bomb the car, the fourth car in line there, the caboose. Two good battles, the one we're watching here and then the one up front. All right, now they're going down into Parabolica, leaving the inside open this time is Filippo. That's gonna let the Greek streak try to duck it in there. He does not. On the outside, Nicholas Berger looking for momentum. He tucks back in line. Rui Coimbra now, who is as far back as seventh, has worked his way up to fourth. And there's your pole center behind him, Eusebio. One of the interesting things I've been noticing is that once they get too wide, 
uh, even though they've got more track, oh, this time they're not going to. In the past, they were just kind of staying in those two lines and the cars were checking up behind. But I think Berger's had enough of that. He's going to give it a go with this three wide situation and see how it pans out. Ooh, Melitis backs out. Felipe, really good under braking. They go wide. Oh. A little bit of a bank. And there goes Eusebio. A little bit of a tap there from Violet, I believe. And then there were five. A quick recovery. We'll watch this on the replay. Just a little bit of a tap. Honestly, maybe a little bit of net code as well. Well, and, and everybody's mashing the throttle down out of there. And these cars do get wheel spin, especially uh, out of certain corners. This one, I noticed that it could be a little tail happy. It's manageable when you're racing by yourself, but it's so on edge that if someone does tap you, I could see how it'd be easy to turn the car around. Eight minutes of racing to go. That gap to fifth position is about three and a half seconds. I think... Right. If I'm honest, it, I think this is between Felipe, uh, Felipe Mumelidis, and Berger, most likely. They've been the major players, although Coimbra has now got himself up to third. He just hasn't looked aggressive enough that I think he'll be a contender for the win. Before we run out of time, let's pay some bills and do Trenton Street's back marker shout out. I'll take this one, Joe. We'll start in 13th position with Derek Holland. He's up two spots, but really not having the race he'd like. Jordy Fike is racing as well. He was looking to crack the top five. Not going to happen today as he's back in 12th. Then we get up to a battle we have not talked around too much. Here are Roni Kabayashi in the 11th position. That's Keith Lloyd and Gonzalez. They battle for 9th, 10th, and 11th, leading that train. Well, look, this is what we were looking at. That's Nada Bomb now up there and Brady. And there's your Trip and Dree's back marker shout out. The driver that caught me by surprise was Morris. He was missing out of that. Morris has had a problem. That's why he's done. Must have had something happen with Peak because I see both of them gone. Front group's coming up to Redifilio again, though, and they are not playing nice anymore. Oh, my goodness. So close. Coimbra is up in front. Boy, nice job from Rui. He has worked so hard, and now he has made it to the front. Felipe, Mutalidis, Berger, Violet. The five cars, the two that are missing is Eusebio and Morris. Both had incidents. Oh my goodness, though. Here comes an attack from Felipe as they head down into Della Rogia. He's got the inside, but we've seen this before. You come in too hot, you're basically going to get it right back. And Mumalides thinks about maybe passing two for one. And he might but actually he, get it. He gets a great drive off because the, the, the tight line in killed the exit speed from Felipe. And now he's going to be stuck on the outside through the Lesmos. Uh-oh. And talk about outside. That's Rui Combra off into the beach. Like Come David on. Hasselhoff, he is perfectly fine. He brings back in at fifth. Sand did <laughs> bother him. Yeah, I think it bothered them, though, because uh, Violet, unfortunately, was to his inside. Both of them had to take an awkward line side by side through uh, the Lesmo 2. And you can see they've lost about a second up to the car ahead. Oh, but here's the deal. They are still fighting up front. That's going to give them an opportunity to come back. Down into Ascari, diving in late. Felipe gets the pass made. They work through there. Now they head to Parabolica. The gap from Mumalidis back to Berger. Only three tenths of a second. You see Berger is right there as Mumalidis now moves to the outside. Joe is going to be too wide in the Parabolica. And, and look at this. They've been caught by Eusebio as well. Marcello is on the back of Coimbra and Violet. Now yep. that could be more due to them falling back themselves. But I'm impressed that he's managed to get back in the game back in there the gap is only a second and they continue to fight up front the car on the outside is Mumelidis look at the defensive line from Bolivia he is not gonna let Berger get to the inside of him and Berger says fine I'll follow the Greek streak through a uh, Redifilio see how this works pinned to the inside now is Felipe he's really good under braking watch that dark car on the inside the dark blue car there it is again Happy to brow break him and get to the corner first. 
And Berger braked a little bit early. He wasn't interested in trying to attack the two of them as they were side by side. I almost thought he was going to try to set him up for the exit of this corner, but uh, looks like there was just too much of the track block for that to work out. But what it did do is allow Violet to the back of him. So it is once again, six cars. He brought his friends with him. Coimbra, who was out in front for the oh, ever so brief of time. And Eusebio, your pole sitter. Just under four minutes to go. Interestingly, the top three right now, what was I talking about earlier? Filippo, Mumulidis, and Berger. All right, let's see if they're going to make an attack down into Ascari here as they work through the second Lesmo. Really, the, the start-finish line is so quick out of Parabolica. You're really asking a lot if you're not leading coming out of that corner to get the win. Yeah, you can't you can't try and snipe someone unless they just have a horrible last corner. I think the ones that I expect to be the most aggressive are third, fourth, and fifth, because basically they've got nothing to lose at this point. They've got to try and do something to get closer to the front. Berger gives a little bump to Mumilidis and not in a very convenient place as he's working through Ascari. That costs him a little bit of time. Under three minutes of racing to go. They continue to race in line. Coimber being challenged back there now. Asibio, like Joe said, has got to start picking up positions. You can't win from six. They stay too wide. Violet's in a nice position, too, back there and forth, because the two behind him, Coimber and Eusebio, starting to fight a lot there. Though they took the Parabolica quite well. I'm surprised. I thought that they were going to fall off. Felipe takes the car over to the right, keeping an eye on Mumalidis. He does not want to leave the inside open. Dino feels very confident under breaking, going into Redifilio. Look at the run, though, from Berger. Here he comes. He's alongside Mumalidis. Now Berger gets up there, they go into the corner and they get through it the first part and they get through the second part as well. A good run from Violet if he wants to try to get into a podium spot. Uh, just wasn't good enough though. He was way too shallow coming off of Redifilio. Uh, he couldn't track out though because there was a bunch of cars out there and it was so hard to tell what was happening in that situation. Moving to the outside is Mumilidis as they head down into Della Rogia. They'll be too wide through here. Again, Dino really comfortable Ooh. under break and they stay too wide. Boy, did he cut the corner? Did the Greek Street cut the corner? We don't know. We'll find out. I think he got a slowdown penalty. Either that or he's lost all of his momentum. No, I think he got a slowdown. He was just, he was trying to stay to the outside for that. I think maybe he's going to come away with it okay because he's limiting how quickly he's giving it back just so they can stay with the group. Trying to serve him without it being too costly. I think he is good to go now. All things considered, that's good job of racing as he falls back into third. Still in the hunt. Berger now in second. The newcomer, Dino Filippa, out in front. Into a story, and look at this. The Greek streak dives it in there. Can he get a vote up in time? He does. Oh my gosh, what a great run from Giannis! Yeah, but this allowed Felipe to just have a little bit of breathing space, and it may not count for much, but hopefully, it'll allow him a chance to kind of calm down, compose himself, figure out how he wants to do this. They're probably going to catch in the draft, but at least he doesn't have to worry about it for one corner. So very close to ending this race, but not. They'll be shown the white flag lap. They're going to cross the finish line with just a tick, a few seconds to go. All right, Mumalidis has really got to get a move on now. The gap is five car lengths. He should be able to gather them up, though, by the time they get to Relafilio, but I don't think he's going to be able to make the pass there. Weaving like a loom is Felipe up front trying to break the draft. Closing, closing, closing is the Greek streak, but again, it's going to be too little, too late, but he's in the hunt. Actually, he didn't need to make the pass here, Joe, but he's good to race. Oh, but he has to oh. take evasive action. He didn't expect him to break when he did. He, I can't believe yeah. he kept the car from spinning. I thought he put it in the grass. I agree. Now he's got work to do. The gap is five car lengths, and he's lost all of his momentum. He's got Berger behind him, Violet in fourth. There is still time. They can't pester Mumalidis, so this does not do Mumalidis any good or Berger any good to fight. 
You guys have got to stay in line and give the Greek streak a chance to get you up there, and then you can fight down into Parabolica. They close the gap down to four. They head to the two Lesmos now. Yeah, Mumulidis looks smooth. Go, Joe. Even though Mumulidis wants to catch them, and, and it might be good for Mumulidis to catch them, Berger wants to catch him as well, so that's why he was fighting so hard. This is definitely playing into the hands of Filippa. Boy, it might be too far. Boy, Filippa really takes the car out into the sand, but I don't think it's going to slow him down. Unless Filippa really has a trouble exiting uh, Ascari, he's in really good shape. Mumulidis about six car lanes back, comfortably in second. Berger comfortably in third. There is battles going on behind him, though. Eusebio under attack from Coimbra. But up front, out of Ascari. Oh, he's not home yet. He's not, but all he has to do is be smooth from here on out. Mumulidis got a great exit out of Ascari. I just think this is too little too late. Five car lengths, but a Parabolica is coming up. Three car lengths. Here comes the Greek streak, two car lanes. He's right on his tail. Does he give him a little bump? He does not. We talked about how fast the start finish line is out of here. Unless we get some tire spin from Dino, he's going to come. He makes his first appearance. It looks like he's going to get the win. He's got his foot to the floor. He's scooting forward in his chair, and the win goes to Dino Filippa. Try as he might to pick up his first win. I Ionis Mumilidis does not. Berger gets third. Isibio, the pole sitter, sits fourth. Violet in fifth. Rui Combra had a taste of the lead for a while, gets sixth. Let's go back. Seventh position, Joe. Looks like uh, Kobayashi's going to get that one. There's a little bit of uh, drama back there. Apparently some wrecks happened that we missed with all the action happening up front, but it looks like Kenny Brady going to be able to get ninth. Fike got eighth, and Holland with a top ten. Yeah, I think maybe Brady got a little bit of a tap and pushed off through Ascari by Kobayashi. Nevertheless, the racing is over. Well, that was exciting. What a great way to wrap up the season. Hey, don't go far. We're going to take a short break. We'll be back to run down the entire finishing order, talk to some of the drivers before we put a lock on the gate for the final time this season. You're watching GSRC on IESN.
cyberspace into your place via the iRacing Esports Network. This is the Global Sim Racing Channel's coverage of the Advanced Monster Cup Strength of Field event round number 12, the final event here from Monza. The results are in, and let's go ahead and give you that finishing order right now. He makes his first appearance. We did not know much much about him but we've learned one thing he is fast i'm talking about dino felipe as he gets the win in his debut event here in the season finale Jonas Mumalidis, the Greek streak, tries he might, could not pick up a win this season. He has to settle for second. Nicholas Burgo is in the hunt as well. He gets third. Marcelo Asubio, our pole sitter, was up and down the order, has to settle for fourth as he came really close to running out of incident points. Eric Violet, a good run for him, sits out in fifth position. Rui Combra had a taste of the lead. He settles for sixth. Then we get back to the battle we were watching in the second group. Hironi Kobayashi. In the seventh position, ahead of the Sheriff, Jordy Fike in eighth. Nice run from Jordy. Kenny Brady gets ninth. Rounding out your top ten, it is Derek Holland. Joe? Only other car to finish on the lead lap is Raul Gonzalez. Then you get into the drivers who experienced some trouble today. Keith Lloyd, one lap down in 12th. Taylor Nadebaum in 13th. And Mark Acklin in 14th. Then you get into the DNFs today. Matt Morris, 15th. Mitchell Peak, 16th. Lee Martin, 17th. And last to the field, sadly, is Ivan Garcia, who actually went for a tumble on the first lap that we didn't get to see in the replay. Before we go to the driver interviews, it's a uh, time for the segment that we like to call Queen of the Ball. What does it take to be Queen of the Ball? Well, it's undefinable, but we know it when we see it. Not only was this driver Queen of the Ball, but it was kind of a coming out party for him as well. I'm talking about our race winner, Dino Felipa. Nice job from Dino as he wins the uh, award that honors Queenie, a fan and supporter of the series and this broadcast. With that award handed out, let's go to interviews right now. And it looks like we're not able to talk to the winner, but I do get to talk to the Greek streak, Ionis Mumilidis, who try as he might, tried to get a win, but he'll have to settle for second. Jonas, boy, it was some fun racing up front. Oh, it definitely was. I never had so much fun racing before. You know, I'll tell you, this new guy, Philippa, really good under braking. He would take that defensive line and dive it in really deep, especially in, like, Redifilio. Hard to get around. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't say he was good on the brakes, although he definitely was good on the brakes. Where he definitely was good was good. He had nerves of steel because... Um, <laughs> It's a nerve game. Um, if you if you decide to stick around, then you really have to you have to pre-calculate contact happening. So it's more of a, more of a game of it's a staring contest for the corner rights. You, you know stare what? at each other, and the first one who looks away doesn't get the corner. You know, it's funny you mentioned that because I saw both you and Nicholas Berger and even Asubio both go in there where Joe and I were saying, "Oh, this is going to work," and sure enough one or two of you guys would back out before you go in there and it never was a three wide into the chicane oh uh, i remember that one into della Roggia, the second chicane uh, it was me rui and Filippi, i think and um for, i was in the middle i was like don't <laughs> please no into the last lap i went with 14x so i was sitting on tight nails how did you get the egg is it is it from uh uh, yeah, with Felipe. No, 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 okay. Felipe. Tw three times, Felipe. Uh, actually, he, he shoved me. I don't know if he shoved me, but someone shoved me away in the last lap, um, which uh, made me unable to catch him properly in the last lap. I think in the second to la last lap, in the second chicane, I got shoved. And the did, last, you, uh, did you also pick up a slowdown pedal that you were able to serve yes, and it didn't yes, cost you? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> a one-second slowdown penalty after the second chicane. That was the same, the same time. Yeah, that was, I said, oh, no, this is not going to be good for him. Oh, yeah. but man, I, I was he's... screaming at my screen. No. Well, you put on a good show. Congratulations. It was great to get to meet you this season. GSRC is going to be around. We're, we're uh, uh, Check us out and, and pick us up on uh, whatever broadcast we have going on, okay? It was great to meet you guys as well. Um, before I leave, I want to thank everyone that supported me across this, uh, the season, the other drivers, and especially you guys for broadcasting. You do an amazing job. And... Uh, yeah, it, I'm going to miss it, but I'm going to definitely be here for when MWT gets reincarnated. Terrific. Congratulations. Good luck. We'll see you down the road. Okay, thank you. Bye. There you have it. Joe, who you got? 
Well, we got Jordy Fike, who managed to get into the top 10. He was amongst that second group that uh, certainly saw a fair bit of its own action. But sadly, Jordy, I'm sure you can understand, he didn't get to show as much of it uh, just because of the, the leaders doing all that they were doing. What was it like from your perspective back with them? Oh, that I just made a complete mess of everything in the first half a lap. It just it goes to show you how much of this is mental strength, because right before this race launched, um, some storms rolled through in my internet blinked out and had to restart my router and i just never got my head straight i missed the last corner of lap one qualifying which ruins the you know lap one of qualifying and lap two of qualifying and then i caught neutral on the start and second going through t11 lap one and spun it and then just derek and i were trying to nibble our way back into those guys and we needed about another four or five laps some of them made their own mistakes so we finished better than we really should have but uh, Mr. Romalitis nipped me at the line four hours ago for the win, so I had pace to do much better here. But it's a great season. I uh, had a lot of fun. Um, do want to give some thanks to some, just to let people know, uh, for right as things stand right now, uh, season three, we will not be broadcasting. Uh, my schedule doesn't allow me to really be involved, and nobody else really jumped to the forefront. I think iRacing kind of gets the summer doldrums as well, numbers drop. So we'll look to maybe try and pick it up again in the fall, but we got to give a bunch of thanks here uh first and foremost to Derek Holland and to everybody's new iRacing grandmother or if you're older like Soup and I mother uh Queenie <laughs> for supporting the series and making all this happen and, and giving everybody the chance to get some airtime here uh Frank at Rick Matek for all he does for our iRacing as a whole all the different things he sponsors and for helping out with this series uh Richard Losper Trip Smith Travis Wallace all kicking in to, to help make this broadcast possible I uh, want to thank my AMS teammates for all the help. I'm driving a Travis Schwenke setup right now, and I think it's kind of been a little bit of a breakthrough for me. And then lastly, iRacing for giving us the platform to be racers, to not have to have, you know, fifteen, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 to even buy a spec Miata to try and run track time with, but to, to get the feeling of really racing uh, within the budget that we can all afford. And for you guys making us feel like we're all, Speed Channel, Velocity Channel, Stars, uh, getting some airtime week in and week out. I think you missed one, Jordy. A big thank you for, as you said, uh, organizing these past two seasons and getting it on the air because I don't think without you we'd uh, been able to cover it. And we enjoyed it a lot. I, I have to say that uh, this was a, a, an interesting one for the finale with uh, obviously it throwing up a little bit of a crapshoot on, on who could win it in the end. How did you feel about this one being the last of the season? Are you glad that it finished up here, or is there a different track you would have rather seen? <sighs> it's um, I would like to see some faces that didn't make it, and understand that it's like I said, the beginning of the summer, and Hartley and Sonny and Travis and some of the guys and Marcello and some of the top talent I would like to see and really duking it out here last week weren't able to make it. I I'm really a guy that loves to wrap things up either at Road Atlanta or Spa for whatever reason. Those are two tracks for me that are kind of season ending tracks uh road atlanta is for a lot of scca and nasa racers and for whatever reason spa seems to even though spa has a lot of draft too there's places to shake it and here you know once i made my mistakes and derek and i were trying to run those guys down there's they're in a pack and there was just no way and we knew it wasn't gonna so it's the there's a lot of discussions on the forums about how the tracks are selected there's always some people that come in late and think they have a better idea how it should be done um, Travis Schwenke puts a lot of work into the, and I think before him, Richard helped with it. Uh, it there's a very systematic way in how tracks are rotated through, making sure that if you bought a track for this season, that you'll get to use it again next season. And there is, you know, it's some linear algebra complex operations going on. And anybody just comes in and goes, but we should have run Bell Island. Uh, I don't want, you know, not picking out anybody in particular, but just you guys give some credit to Travis. He puts a lot of work into picking these tracks out and to try to keep driver count up and to keep this series. Like I said, Dino is in the chat right now saying he can't believe the talent that was here yet. Look at some of the talent that was missing. So and this is a, a great series to run in. Sue? Absolutely. Jody, thanks a lot. We look forward to seeing you down the road. Always fun to talk to you, man. All right. Thanks, guys. I'll be uh, I'm actually warned work. There's a lot of TVs at work. I'm taking my Google Chromecast in. So some of the GRSC broadcasts over the weekends are going to be showing it off at Arthur's Restaurant in Outer Banks, North Carolina this uh, this summer. I did it a couple of times last summer, and the people get a couple of drinks in them, and they don't even realize they're watching sim racing.
<laughs> Congratulations. Good. Always good to have you. Jordy Fike, the uh, organizer here of the Advanced Mazda Cup. All right. That's going to do it here for us for this season. Joe, let's, before we go, I'm not going to go. I'll give you a second. I just think it was a great season. I enjoyed it. The races are fast. They're short, full of action. What do you think? I think it's a lot of fun. And, and you know, whenever we have a co comment someone in a co-commentator role, we always ask them to, to get laps in the car so that they know what they're doing and talking about. And it's, uh, even though I've driven the MX-5 a lot, it was, it was fun getting back in it this season, remembering why this car is so well liked and why it's so much fun. You just, it, it's easy to hop in and just have a blast. Obviously the top drivers have to do a lot to find those last few tenths and they are phenomenal for that. But if anybody's thinking of getting on iRacing, this is the first car that you're gonna drive on the roadside. And it is so much fun to drive, just incredible. So highly encourage everybody to come and experience this. Could not agree more. GSRC would like to thank everybody in the advanced Mazda Cup community that Jordy talked about, and especially Jordy himself for supporting the broadcast. And also to Queenie for the queen of the ball. How you doing, Queenie? Good to have you on board. On screen now are some of the equipment and software that we use to stream cyberspace into your place. Additional thanks to June Lalonde. Who's June Lalonde? Well, June provides our iconic music. See the screen to how to get a hold of more of her great work. This being the final event of the season, GSRC's coverage of the Advanced Monster Cup is concluded. But rest assured, when the AMC comes back, GSRC will be here to bring you all the action. Sliding across your screen right now are some of the upcoming GSRC broadcasts, so check those out and mark them down on your calendar. If you want to find out more information about us, like when will the AMC be back, well, here's where you go, GlobalSimRacingChannel.com. We also have social media at Twitter, GSR Channel, Facebook, Global Sim Racing Channel, and Instagram at GSRC underscore Graham. Hey, if you haven't done so yet, become a YouTube subscriber for us by heading over to our YouTube page and hitting that big red button. Finally, on behalf of the entire crew, that would be Joe, Sean, and Dougie, I'd like to thank all of you for watching, as it was a newcomer, Dino Filippo, picking up the win, Filippo picking up the win here in the season finale. And let's not forget to uh, give congratulations to Sonny Catch Me If You Can't, who was our season champion. With that said, we're off to half on Storm of the Castle. So until next time, race clean, race hard, and we'll see you on the track.